Okay, so today I thought I'd do something a little bit different for the uh, diary podcast. Um, as we've come completely up to date with me coming out of prison and just about keeping myself out of trouble, and I attributed a lot of me keeping out of trouble to having something to live for. Um, and that something to live for was mostly due to meeting my wife or my girlfriend at the time. Um, but yeah, and I thought she it would be interesting, and she quite wanted to do this as well. Um, it would be interesting to for her to join me on the podcast today. So um, uh, yeah, say hello. Hello. So this is my wife, and we thought it would be quite interesting to uh, look back at our early part of our relationship, where I was very much fresh out of prison. So I came out of prison in August, was it 2008, 2009? 2009. 2009. And... We met in December 2009. Yeah. But we were talking online. You were trying to chat to me. From about September time, wasn't it? Yeah. That's right. Because we met on a dating site, and I remember just being completely drawn in by her eyes. She's got the most beautiful blue eyes. And these big uh, Bambi eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember being completely... Uh, mesmerized by her eyes and I just thought I had to I had to meet this girl and I had to uh, I had to have her um, but for three <laughs> months <laughs> for three I months didn't want to know. for three months she didn't want to know and she evaded me um, and eventually we we managed to meet and uh, and started and then met face to face and started talking and things and and right from the beginning I remember when we were sat outside about three doors down from your actual house I wouldn't tell you where I live <laughs> Um, because she didn't want to date a, t a man from our town, because our town is, is full of scallies, <laughs> full of scallies like me. Um, so she didn't want to really, she didn't really want to meet me um, nope. for a while. But then she caved in in the end and, and succumbed to my charms and, and let me walk her home from work. And uh, I kind of talked about the fact that I, you know, I used to smoke weed and I used to sell a bit of weed as well. And I remember you said that you... Um, you used to smoke weed also. I did. And I was like, can you get some? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's always the most important thing in any relationship is be able to supply drugs to each other. Absolutely. Exactly. Um, so, I mean, how did it make you feel at first when you thought, when you realised, because actually, how did you, because this is quite interesting, how did you find out I was a criminal? My friend told me, do you remember, he, he messaged me one day and he goes, I think you should know this guy you're seeing, he's been done for burglary and everything. And he sent yeah. me the the link to their website. That's it. Because it was a, it was the, was the burglary the was the time when I came out of prison. And it was the day I came out of prison. And I went straight round to the, the drug dealer's house who grabbed me up. And I, uh, there was no answer at the door. So I jumped up on a, on a, on a, kitchen roof on a flat roof and I went to the bedroom window and there was there was absolutely nothing in the bedroom it was empty um, so I realized the place was empty um, and ended up getting caught for that and obviously retiredly back in prison straight away and it was that was that was the only thing that was kind of online about me that's that the point. only thing I saw yeah I um, I remember I, I thought oh my god you know I've always you know I've been brought up in a good family ish <laughs> <laughs> as any family yeah. yeah um you know we abided by the law and everything we never did anything that was you know horrible mm. or you know we were honest you know yeah. tried to be honest and everything your family were both hard working your mum and dad were both hard working they both yeah. had, had honest jobs mum and dad yeah they're definitely hard working and they said to me you know you wanted to like, they wanted me to go out with somebody, like a doctor or something. And mm. and you did see doctors before me, didn't you? I was Ed? pilots, doctors, yeah. Good and people. Then, <laughs> Honest met, folk. Yeah. And then I met you. <laughs> and that was exactly the reason why you didn't want to date people from our town, because they were people like me. You, but I never saw that side of you. I when you like when people said about you and your past I couldn't see it because I never I've seen glimpses of it now yeah. but I've 
back then I could never see it in you. You were you never looked the sort. You had a you had a nice good face, like you know, <laughs> scallies have like beat up faces and so you didn't yeah. and I think that's what helped you. My face got me out of trouble a lot because I didn't look like a criminal. You a didn't. lot of my life I didn't look like a criminal. No, you didn't look like a criminal. I'm starting to get a bit old and weather beaten now, but at the time I was yeah, quite well, young. Come and fresh on, look face. at the people that that have been to prison, normally look gnarled and yeah. Just like they've they've been for a lot. Yeah. You've been for a lot, but you managed to like not Do you remember the first time you saw my temper when it was those people when I was in that my place um <laughs> oh, like my first flat and there was a, they 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 were having it was almost like a herd of elephants party in the in the room above me because it was all bed sits and it was all kind of scallies in there. <clears throat> yeah. And it was quite late at night. Was it about 9ish or 10ish something like that? I don't yeah, know I if think it, was late. it was later than that. I think it was like eleven o'clock at night, and they were having like a party. And they were just upstairs. fucking stamping on the floor and banging and everything. And I that because it it was I was only out of prison what a month or no because it was December when we met, December, so it must be three like months out, out, out of yeah, prison. Yeah, three four months. So I'm still an animal, really. I, I was still I was still out of control at that point, wasn't I? I wasn't. I wasn't kind of. I was. Holding, but I wasn't doing, you know, I wasn't restraining myself much then, was I? I was, you know, I didn't have much self restraint from many You're things. a fucking nightmare. <laughs> if truth be told, you were a nightmare. And I, I remember... That night, I genuinely, because I've, I've always shied away from confrontation and, yeah. you know, I'm, well, it's not now, I couldn't give two shits. <laughs> but back then, I, you know, I was shy and I didn't want to like, rock the boat or anything and when you started on him i was like oh my god like how the fuck is this gonna like turn out and when we're talking about them when we're talking about them it was it was more than five or six people wasn't it yeah it was a good old party going on upstairs and you well you made them shut up i think yeah we caught them because i i again when i since i've come out of prison this time i've had this life sentence still hanging over my head so my everything you know i'm on a second strike still to this day i'm on a second strike so one more one more um crim- violent offense and i could still be put away for life um so that's always been hanging over me and i, I remember god do you remember when we was walking along uh green lane and those kids with a dog we, we had your dog <laughs> And one of the fucking kids, like, they're just a bunch of little scally kids sat on a bench, and one of them said something about the dog, like, like just sarky or something. Laughed at it, laughed at the dog. And you went nuts on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had to kind of push certain buttons for me to, like, um, to get pissed off like that. Mm. But, yeah, that they, they just pushed all, they just pushed all the buttons. But I remember getting annoyed with you because I thought if any of them say anything to you, then I could end up fighting one of these guys and I could end up going away for life because <laughs> you've got about defending that. your honour over this bloody dog. Um, and I remember getting quite annoyed because, you know, I'm that dumb that I will fight a 17-year-old over, <laughs> over you know, your honour and end up going back to jail. Bearing in mind all the stupid things I've done in the past, you know, because you, you've been listening to my podcast now, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, what, what episode are you up to? Um, you've just gone back into prison after being on matey's roof. Okay, so that point then. So yeah. Oh, fantastic. I mean, bear in mind this podcast has been out for a year or so now. Fuck off. You, you've, you've rushed I'm to listen to I'm a busy person. <laughs> you've got fuck all to do. No. <laughs> um, but... Um, but back to that. So yeah, no, we. I went. I remember going nuts at those people upstairs, and and to, you know that was classic me. Really, I was gladiatorial. I saw everything as an injustice towards me, and I saw everything as I had to defend myself, and also make sure that nobody saw me as being having. So maybe we, if I'd been in the room on my own, I might have just stewed. And not done anything at all, but because you were there, I had to. I'm not going to get mugged off by them. I was a fucking gorilla banging my chest in front of my female, um, and do you know what? That's the first time I've ever looked at it like that. So maybe if if I had been on my own, I probably would have just sat and stewed on that, um, and uh, and not fucking um, done anything at all. But because 
you were there, I had to fucking square up to them. And as they were coming out, because at some point they come out about 11, half 11, they came out. And uh, I remember, you know, fucking yelling something at them and they just shit their pants and nobody dared to come down the stairs. Now, bear in mind, there's, there's about seven or eight of them. They could have easily fucking come down and stairs and swarmed me. But I was confident enough in my ability to kick the shit out of them all <laughs> that I didn't give a fuck. And I think something in them could see that I didn't give a fuck. And I've always believed that if you act mental enough, then people just kind of back down because they think, what the fuck is this guy on? Yeah. I mean, what did you feel like? Um, well, like I said, you know, I don't particularly like people kicking off and that was that could have been a complete mess if you were you know lynched by these people oh how the fuck am i gonna like defend myself or you know yeah i didn't even think of that though that didn't come into my consideration because i've been in situations where i've had to fight two or three people at a time and i've always won and these little scallies were nothing to me because i was I, you know i was still quite muscly at the time you know, I hadn't quite got myself onto putting all this shit up my nose, so I hadn't got skinny yet. Yeah. <laughs> but um, after that, it kind of, you know, we, we kind of moved on in our relationship and, and moved into our own place. Um, and I was always on the peripheries of crime and wanting to get, you know, back into normal life. Um it was always difficult because it was all I had ever known. So I'd basically left school at 16. And by the time I was 18, I was already, you know, I was 18 in August. And by December, I was in prison. So I'd only really had, you know, from being a child, being recognised by the, you know, the world as a child, I'd had two years, you know, two months, four months, and then I was in prison. And then I spent the next 10 years in prison, and then I was out. So I'm an adult, but acting in the world as a child. Um, and it was almost the whole time I was in prison, I was almost freeze, freeze-framed. <clears throat> it was, no, it is noticeable. Yeah. Like, it definitely is noticeable that, you know, you never did anything like sorting the bills out and things like that. I remember you saying that was a big thing, sort of just like getting the mm. bills and that together. Yeah. Yeah, we paid everything cash for a long time. Anytime a letter came in, we paid it in cash. It, it was a long time before we even put everything on direct debits and just let it take care of itself. Mm. Yeah, but then, you know, you'd never had to do anything like that. No. No. I mean, because no, you'd lived to your parents before, so everything was taken care of. With you before, so yeah, it was, true. it was, um, you know, neither of us knew what we were doing. We basically just had to learn together, though, didn't we? Exactly. We got through it. Yeah. We managed just, yeah. <laughs> just about. We made about every mistake. Every right. But we got through it in the end. Now, at some point, well, at one point, I managed to get myself um, into a call centre because this call centre was taking on absolutely anybody. And uh, call centre work is always easy money. Um, I was ready to take a lot of shit because, again, I'd only been out of prison less than six months. My philosophy was I don't care how much shit the manager takes, you know, gives me. Um, no one's ever going to stab me. So, you know, what, what, what's the worst they can do? They can use their words. And these, these you know, I've, I've been around people who could absolutely tear you down in front of, a, you know, a, a, a group of murderers and drug dealers and, and everything else and so you know being told my figures weren't good enough by a, you know a sales floor manager was absolutely nothing I could handle that um but then one day when I'm at work I'd only been there a few a few minutes and I get a message from from you saying that the police have been round and uh you know they'd uh they'd done a search so what, what was that like <laughs> I remember I was um, washing up and then somebody knocked on the door so I opened it up and there was two people stood at the door and then two people stood down 
down at the back doors. Were they in uniform? Was it like policemen? No, they were plain clothes. Plain clothes, like CID? Plain clothes, yeah. Okay. And was it like, women, men? There was... Uh, it was a man and a woman, and then I think it was... Yeah, and at the front door, and then a man and a woman at the back door. But also, there was uh, a big squad car, like the big um, Ford Transits. Okay, yeah parked up in the driveway yeah. and then there was like a couple of police officers in the car park as well now bearing in mind we're in a, a one bedroom flat now this one bedroom flat was tiny it consisted of three rooms there was a living room living room slash kitchen um, a bedroom and a small bed uh, bathroom um so yeah what what happened they said they asked if you were there i said no and they're like, well, can we search? I'm like, well, so I look down. I'm like, well, you can see all the rooms. There's nobody here. Oh, we need to come in. All right, you need to. Sh- have you got a warrant? <laughs> and he laughed at me and he said, no, that's just in the movies. I thought that as well. I, like, oh, I remember okay. kicking off to my solicitor once because I was like, they came in and they didn't even have a warrant. <clears throat> can we can we get them done for this? Can the whole thing be thrown out now? <laughs> and they're like, no, that's that's only in American movies that warrants matter. Yeah, apparently. And then they were like. Fine, we need to search. I said, fuck it, go on and go and have a look. And they weren't, you were obviously weren't there. They're like, where are you? I stupidly said that he was at work. And told them. Yeah, told he's them at work. Go, go and have a chat with him there. I wasn't happy about that, but that, that happened. <laughs> that was stupid. It's like, I you panicked. Did... I no, panicked. No, you're honest. And like you say before, you've never been involved in crime. You've never been around criminals. There's nothing that you've ever had to do with the police. That's the only not been time honest. I've had dealings with the police is when someone tried to break into my mum and dad's house yeah. and I caught them red-handed and I went fucking nuts at him. And what happened? Fuck all. Fuck Absolutely all. fucking nothing. I even knew, knew who did it and nothing happened. Exactly. Bullshit. <laughs> we, um, so yeah, what, what, go on, talk me through what happened then. So what so, happened, they, they came, they came to the door, they, they were asking for me. Um, you said I'm not there. You said I'm at work. So what? What happened? Then they left. They didn't come in. They no, they did. They they, they came in and they oh, had they a look around. Me, yeah, okay. in the three rooms. And I was like, I told you he's not here. And I said that you're obviously at work. Yeah. And they asked where they where it was, and then that's where they found you. Okay. Yeah. So did they did they, they search they the left. flat though? They no. They came back. After they After arrested me. After they arrested you. Oh, okay. They came back and then they searched the flat. Oh, I thought they searched. Oh, no, no, yeah. No. They, yeah, yeah, no. They came and got found me, you they? first and they because came back. <clears throat> I remember I got the phone call. I oh, know you sent me a text in you and I had my phone on me. So I saw that I got a text and I went over to my manager and I said, oh, the, you know, the police have just, you know, police have just been to my place and they're, they're on the way here. And uh, he said to me, okay, get back on the phones and, you know, we'll, we'll deal with it when it happens. And I, I remember it was literally one phone call. Um, and then he come and tapped me on the shoulder and said, you know, they're here. And uh, I went downstairs and and the CID were down there. And, you know, they said to me uh, um, a little bit about, you know, everything. And my manager come running, you know, the, the, the owner of the company came down and said, oh, you know, you can go into one of the interview rooms and, and you can interview him in there because he's completely mental and, and money driven. And he didn't. He just thought, you know, everything could be dealt with and he can get back on the phones in no time. Um, but no, I ended up getting, you know, taken into custody and things. And uh, um, when they came back and they searched the flat then. That's when they came back and searched the flat, yeah. yeah. There was, I think, five or six of them. I think it must have been six of them searching the house, uh, the flat. They went through everything. How did that make you feel? It's fucking horrible. It's humiliating. It's having somebody go for everything that you've got. Everything. Every single item. Everywhere. They went through the fridge, the freezer. I remember him put this bloke pulling out a bottle of milk. Like those four litres, four pints of yeah. milk. And it was frozen. And he's like, oh yeah, what's this then? I'm like, it's milk. Why is it yellow? Milk goes yellow when it's frozen. <laughs> oh. And then, like, they're going through the kitchen cupboards. And this is, like, you know, when we didn't have a huge amount of stuff. Like, mum was giving us, like, bits and pieces and I had a bag of flour. Yeah. But it was just in, like, a, a sandwich bag. And um, the police officer goes, oh, yeah, what's this thing? Oh, it's flour. What, what do you want me to just say? 
and he like everything he thought he, he could pull out and he's like what's this like, <laughs> well, it's, it's this or it's, it's that you know it's what what and then i was just like what are you trying to find and they brought the sniffer dog in and like oh if there's been any drugs in this house we'll find it i'm like crack on and they sent the sniffer dog round and they didn't find anything there was nothing there they were there under fucking like false what's it called they didn't find anything at all did they, they didn't find nothing there was no evidence. absolutely nothing I mean, bearing in mind, I've been out of prison. In, uh, what was this January? That was, wasn't it? Because I'd been at work, of, you know, about three, four weeks. Um, and bearing in mind, this was a call center. They were quite harsh. If you even took a day off sick, they they sacked you. Um, so for me to get arrested from the call center floor and literally marched out by CID, because um, I had to go and get my bag and everything in front of them. Um, so I was literally marched across the hall, the whole call center floor by CID. Um, and some of my mates thought that was cool as fuck. <laughs> um, but yeah, I ended up getting no further action on that one um, because there was nothing, there was no real evidence against me um, for any anything. Now, you didn't know anything, did you? You didn't hear anything after the police kind of took me. Absolutely nothing. Did I get a phone call with you? I can't even no, remember. You got, no, I got nothing. You just went. Yeah. Um, it's probably because I don't know your number. <laughs> still don't know it. I still don't know. It. Um, still the same number as well. I know. I don't know why. Didn't get, why didn't you get a phone call? That's mental. Even in the movies, you get a phone call. Um, I can't remember. But to be honest, I, I, so did I text you when I came out? I don't no, know. No, because your phone, phone was dead. Had died. I think my phone had died. So that's possibly why I didn't get to uh, get to speak to you. But so I remember I, I got on the train home, um, and. You were on the friend on the phone to my friend, our friend, weren't you? Yeah. And I walked past the window. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I've never been so happy to see you. Cause I've been on the phone to him earlier on, absolutely in hysterics, going, Oh my god, you've been arrested. I'm never gonna see him again. Literally in a complete mess. He told me to hang up. He goes, please bring me back in a minute when you've composed <laughs> yourself. I was an absolute wreck. I, it's just, just horrible not knowing what's going to happen, and not knowing if I'm ever going to see you again. I thought I was. I even I thought that there was a possibility that I could go away for years because I didn't trust the system at all. Um, I thought that even with, you know, coincidental evidence that I would get rec because I was still on my license at that point. Um, but they could have recalled you and everything. They could have recalled me. They could have um, sent me away. They could. I could have been waiting for trial for six months and lost. You know, obviously that call centre job was the first job I had when I got out, um, other than just fucking around. Um, you but, had to, though. Yeah. I was just fucking fed up with it all. Yeah, it was too much of a strain on our relationship, wasn't it? Stressful was not the fucking word. It was horrible. Because me and my pal was just, you know, fucking around and causing strain on us and... You the thing constantly... is, you didn't like it. It just comes as a second nature to you. You lived that life. I've never lived it. I it was, was very blasé with it, wasn't it? You I? couldn't give a shit. I'm <laughs> like, it was fucking horrible. Like, just constantly worrying. Because people coming and going all the time wound you up in the end, didn't it? Yeah. But then I, I, I worried about you because I know you're better than this and your life before I met you. Because, I've, I, like I said, I've seen glimpses of it. It's not it's not glamorous. Like these women that say, oh, yeah, I love a bad boy. It's not fucking... No. No, you like the person. I don't... It's not a, it's not a good... It's a horrible lifestyle. Yeah. It's horrible. I didn't like it, put it that way. And I'm glad that, you know, it was just chill. The thing that put me off drug dealing in the end was when I tried to start selling a little bit of weed to the people at work. And because I thought, you know, they smoke enough weed and they get paid. They're in sales, so they're going to pay. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a no-brainer for me, you know? So, you know, the three or four people that I started selling weed to in, in work, it started off fine, and then I started laying them on, you know, giving them a bit of, um, what do you call it, tick. Um, and then it would get to payday and then they'd, you know, three of them would pay and the other one wouldn't. 
and uh, it started going down that road again as in you know I just taking a piss instantly flipped back into fucking you know old me and you know I should have just you know looking back at it now I could have easily just brushed over it and gone okay pay when you can you know because it's not it's one person it's not the end of the world I'm not you know I'm not being humiliated in front of the whole town you know I could have just you know brushed over it but the old me I would you know fight to the death over a fiver um so the fact that he would owe me was it like 100 at a time or 150 something like that where he just kept coming get in eights every night and saying that he'd come and pay for it at the weekend or something it, I, yeah it was something it might, i think it was about 100 quid or something like that i've done it it may have even been less i don't know i was, I was stupid enough to go crazy over that <laughs> but i remember end up threatening this guy and i said to him that uh what was it? He, he just, I know he just got a brand new iPad and he said that was the only thing that added value. So I told him to get down to cash converters and go and, go and fucking cash it in and uh, bring me the money. And uh, he ended up giving the, the iPad to his mate and his mate lent him the money to then come and pay me. Um, and I just sat there thinking like, this is supposed to be just a little sideline and I ended up already getting myself down this path again of just, being pushed into wanting to bash people's head in over small amounts of money and ended up going back to prison for fucking something stupid <clears throat> and possibly now spending again the rest of my life in prison over fucking something stupid. You don't need to do that. No. So, it, it you know, the rewards become way less because I would love to just go into... I would love to say that I could just go and deal drugs again and I'd get all the good sides of it. So you get all the money, you get all the notoriety... You know, you get all the the, the, the fucking glamour. That's five percent ev- of the time. And everyone pays. <laughs> That's five percent. Yeah. Ninety five percent is bullshit. Because you know, once you're doing all that stuff, you end up up all night, and your mental state changes, and you end up fucking falling out all the time, because you're not sane human beings. And yeah. we've been up for three days. No. <laughs> so. When we very first met, we used to go to parties at my brother's. And I remember one time a guy come in, and this was one of the first times you saw a glimpse of me. And <laughs> I remember you said something yeah. to someone. I remember someone leaning over and going, oh, oh if it's a problem, I'll, and I'll say something to him. And I, I instantly got my back up because I was that, you know, sort of gorilla knobhead. And... Uh, I remember just saying to you, what's that? What's that? What, what, what's he talking about? And it was, you said to me that it was a, a guy that you went to school with and uh, and he'd bullied you. Yeah. Do you remember him? Yeah. Still remember his name. <laughs> so instantly, um, I made you point him out to me and uh, I went to my brother because it was my brother's party. And I just said, listen, this lad used to bully, um, bully my missus in school. And uh, do you mind? Do you know? Do you know him that well that if I if I upset him, um, you know, is it going to cause a problem? And he said to me, "Look, you know, he's a friend of a friend. I don't care what you do." <laughs> so um, he just happened to go off to the toilet. So I followed him. And uh, my brother lived in a small little council uh, flat at the time, so the kitchen was just opposite the toilet. So I waited in the kitchen and. My brother, you know, bearing in mind I've only been out of prison a few months, so my brother was still quite keen to <laughs> to, uh, to sort of see what was about to happen. And one of his friends then followed me into the kitchen as well because <laughs> he, he absolutely loved the fact I'd just come out of prison and, you know, something was about to kick off. And uh, um, this lad uh, stuck his head out the uh, the bathroom door um, because there was no toilet roll in there because, you know, we're at a party and everyone's snorting, so the toilet roll's uh, a commodity at the moment. <laughs> and... Um, he comes out the the, the, the bathroom and I uh, he sticks his head out looking for a toilet roll or something. And uh, I call him over. And uh, so it's my brother standing one side of me and, and his mate standing the other and I'm stood in front of him. And uh, I tell him that, you know, my missus just told me that, you know, you used to bully him, bully her in uh, in school and... I give him the little speech about how bullying's not okay and how this can mess you up for the rest of your life and how she still remembers it now, you know, all these years later. 
and uh, I think it'd be probably a good idea if you go and uh, go and apologize to her for for what you did. And he says that he couldn't remember anything about this, and he used to get bullied in school, and he you know doesn't remember being a bully. Um, I don't ever remember him getting bullied in school. That's bollocks. <laughs> Absolute bollocks. But at this point, his hands are trembling and he's shaking in front of me. He's he's not as tall as me and he's not as big as me. I'm you know I'm still still training and I'm still quite big. And um, I used to enjoy that. I used to see people. I used to like watching people crumble in front of me. Um, you know, not even fighting them, just you know them just falling apart in front of me. Um, and it's wrong, but that's what came from being in prison and. That's you kind of, f- you like weakness in people sometimes. That's again something from prison is you know that's the way you you put yourself higher in the pecking order is by exploiting people's weaknesses by you know pushing yourself above them. Yeah. And it's wrong, but it's, that's that was my education system. That was I, I keep saying that was my sort of university. You know, between eighteen and twenty eight, you know, I was even a you know an adult student. <laughs> that was all I knew, and that's how I, you know that's what I had to do to survive. It was very difficult to shake it off afterwards. Like it's not that, like it now, thankfully. Like that, the chap in my comments said, what was it, you know, you, when you prepare for war, it's difficult to be normal afterwards mm. or some shit like that. And it's very true. I found myself very difficult to be kind of, like, uncombative. I was quite combative. Well, you think, you think, like, from the age of, what, 18 to, like, it was 27 when you got out, wasn't it? It wasn't yeah. 28. By the age of, like, from all those years, you've just been left to get on with it, on your own, and fight your own battles. Yeah. Like, that you've had no support from anybody. Yeah. Prison. Let's be honest, have you? No, prison was my only, you know, my only Like, you've had your mates and everything, but they're yeah. obviously fighting their own little battles in prison and stuff. So you've just got yourself to look after. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes without having that kind of, like, support network around you, you do just become like dead to everything, and so did you think that's what made it change? Because I always attribute it to the fact that being with you made me have something to actually give a fuck about. Because exactly, I started to obviously limit everything I was doing because I could see me losing you. And I always remember coming back because everything was still quite hectic and kicking off. And my nan, my grand died, um, and I had to go off to Nottingham and and go and go to a funeral. And when I came back, um. We had quite a serious conversation because our relationship wasn't going great and you said that you wanted to leave me yeah um and i remember just saying that you know just give me one more chance to sort my head out and kind of stay away from everything and that's when i started applying for every job going i remember it was something like october or november time and i, I started applied for every job going and i'd never been so interested in getting a job before um and then I, um, I managed to get the job at that call centre by the January. Yeah. Or by t- they told me in December, but I got it in January, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you were ready to leave me. It was just so hectic. It was a hectic life. I just couldn't cope with it. It was... Um, it's just completely alien to anything I've ever like, had to go through or experienced anything. It was... Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you, you're better than that. You don't need to do all that shit to to survive you can survive on your own indeed so when did you think that you started seeing an app a change in me from being the criminal prisoner me to being you know the the more normal member of society me i think it's since we got married you think it was because we got married after about three years of being together so you think it's from then I don't know, because you've really calmed down recently. You're a lot calmer and you don't kick off as much. There, there are times when <laughs> your inner person rears, rears its ugly head and starts kicking off, like today in Tesco's. <laughs> <laughs> I still have a problem with people, even to this day, and the people in my podcast know this. But it's something that we, it's it's just day by day and step by step. But it's it's sometimes there's no there's not even any talking to you because <laughs> when you're in that mindset and I'm like come on there's no need to be like that you start kicking off at me I'm like nope you just 
let you just simmer away on your own. I Get found... you home and you'll be right. Yeah, it does take me a while <laughs> to calm down because I can take myself away for sort of five minutes and I just want to come back and go a little bit furthermore, you know, but no, it needs to be like an hour or an hour and a half. Like I get myself away and just chill the fuck out. But, and again, I can only blame prison for being making me so, until I can find a better excuse. I can only find prison as just making me explosive. Yeah. Yeah. But hopefully it's not. So how have you, how have you found talking about this? Is this, has this been weird? It's been entertaining just thinking back to then. I have fond memories of back then, but it was a nightmare. On the whole, it was just bullshit from start to finish. Yeah. It was, it was, it was nice to, it was fun. Don't get me wrong. It was fun. I'm not going to dispute the fact it was fun, but it was just too much. I, I lived the life for, what, a couple of months? That was too <laughs> much. I'm like, fuck this. I can't cope anymore. Now, do you remember when I took you um, to Newquay um, to go and visit some of the uh, people I used to knock about with? And um, and even my best mate's mum is <laughs> hard as brilliant. nails. She's <laughs> hard as fuck. Yeah. And obviously they, li- they live this different world of, uh, you know, just um, sitting around snorting coke and drinking vodka. <laughs> and uh, um, do you remember when those two kids came in who's your dad what do you know yeah. <laughs> what the fuck exactly. i've never seen i've never heard that see i used to have that on my estate where i grew up um so grown men would be asking you you know they'd be stopping you on the estate as you're walking through and be asking you you know like who do you know why are you on the estate and like you know you say it to people and they just don't get it but you saw it you know like you know you can't be kids walking around people's houses you were serious crooks without being like you know who's your dad who's your family why are you in here like, there could be a policeman. Whoa. There could be a fucking policeman's kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, these, you know, you've got to ask them. You know, these kids are like, what, 13? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> not, even, not even that. Who knows? Whereas the estate where I grew up on, you used to ride around on your bikes. You go, all right, yeah. I swear, <laughs> you do anything wrong, I'm telling your mum. You're like, fuck. <laughs> I grew up in the kind of estates where the fire engine would need a police escort. <laughs> yeah, no, we were... Used to go around like you need blighted. <laughs> Good little kids on their bikes. <laughs> Let's go and build a den. <laughs> Gosh. So anyway, um, I think you know it's nearly thirty-eight minutes, nearly forty minutes. Rambled on a bit. We have. It's been fun doing this with you. Thanks. We might do another one one day. Thank you for having me on your podcast. If anyone would, because I know the, the only people listening right now are the actual true fans. So if anybody in the comments would uh, would like us to talk about anything or do another one, um, or if you've got any questions for my uh, my wife about how she puts up with me, or it's deals, hard work. or inspires me, or you know gets me through this, because being in prison has left me absolutely mentally broken um, at some points, and uh, my wife has been the only person who's been consistent in my in, entire life since since my dad died when I was nine. Um, the only consistent person I've ever had in my life has been my wife. And uh, she's the only person that's kept me going for for most of this time. Only 12 years. You've given me a reason to stay out of prison and actually give a fuck about, you know, not doing it anymore. So thank you. Good. I'm glad. Brilliant. So <laughs> that's the end. Um, thank you very much for listening. And like I say, anything you want to know in the comments or um, anything you want us to do in another one, um, because I'm thinking we could probably do more of these. Um, so yeah just let us know thank you very much and thank you thank you very much have fun cheers bye bye bye